Hi, Sophie. Hi, Sin. Hi, Mordecai. Hello. Hi, everyone. And welcome to the Snack Covenant, episode 244. And today, we're going to talk about a very special game. You have a look in your eye. Fallout 3! Yeah, I, I kind of figured <laughs> you were going to say that. <laughs> Ignore Sin. Sin is suffering the effects of lockdown. We're actually going to talk, unsurprisingly, about Elden Ring with our very, very special guest, Mordecai from the Elden Ring podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you very much for agreeing to be on. This is wonderful. Mordecai, let me ask you. Are there any Elden Ring news today? So Mordecai, even though you're significantly more popular than us, it's possible that some people come to our channel to watch our analysis of Reborn. <laughs> so for those people, could you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? My name is Mordecai and I make daily updates on a video game that does not actually exist. If you've uh, come across one of my videos, you'll hear my hollow voice every day <laughs> saying there is no news. It has become part of my evening ritual, you know. Mm -hmm. Grab your nightly coffee, listen to the Mordecai Elden Ring news. Yeah. And you've been doing something really, really interesting lately. Yeah, I've had uh, streamers, voice actors, speedrunners, journalists, etc. come on this past month to post an update, just uh, trying to make the wait go by faster for people by having their favorite person in the community or just someone that's not me doing the update. It's really cool too because a lot of people get exposed to creators they may have not known otherwise. Yeah, they're all very cool people. You should check them out. Awesome! So Mordecai, not only are you a master of the daily Elden Ring updates, you're also the master of rumors, leaks, and speculation. Yeah, I've been uh, hunting down information for this game since shortly after its announcement. I saw George R. R. Martin was involved and it's a new FromSoft game that hopefully will have multiplayer in it, so yeah, why not? Hmm. And that's one of the few concrete things we know about the game, isn't it? That George R.R. Martin was involved in creating the mythos. Yeah, so that was actually leaked uh, some time before the game was officially announced, and everyone was like, George R. R. Martin working with a Japanese developer, yeah, right. Like, pe people <laughs> wouldn't believe that, or that it was from software, but... No, I, I remember that happened, and then there was... Someone found an interview with him from, like, a year prior, where he had said, like, yeah, I just finished working on a video game in Japan, and he just mentioned it very, very offhandedly. And then everyone was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you read his blog, that man is involved with so many different projects whether it's TV shows, other books, interviews, conventions, just basically anything to make him not have to finish his remaining books. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mordecai. Thank you, Sophie. Before we proceed, there was an interesting, I guess, leak that happened recently. Oh, well, I'd hardly call that a leak, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Could you maybe explain the situation to us? Yeah, so as far as I understand it, GameStop, if you've ever been to any of their stores, they have these little cardboard boxes above like where they have all the games, and it's usually just an art of the game or like the game's cover or something on a cardboard box. And for some games that are haven't come out yet, they print one out that just says the game's name or if it has a logo or something and it says coming soon next to it and they decided to print one out for Elden Ring and some other games like Digimon Survive I think was another one and they decided to hang these up in their stores it's printed by GameStop themselves so it's not like Bandai Namco or anyone sent it to them. It's just uh, their own thing. 
and I don't think it's an indication of anything coming up other than, I guess, the game coming soon, if you're to believe that. But we've been at coming soon for the last two years, so that's that doesn't mean anything. I mean, you could pre-order the game on their store right now for PlayStation 4 and Xbox. And it has a little placeholder date that says December 31st, 2021. And I always yeah. get people asking me, is this the real release date? And I'm like, no, that's just a placeholder date. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. Oh. Yeah, it's like a Final Fantasy VII Remake that you could order for about four years before it came out. Four? Possibly longer. Holy moly. Well, let's hope we don't have to get to that with uh, Elden Ring. Well, we're halfway. <laughs> we're halfway there. <laughs> Well, Mordecai, you may or may not know this, but I'm actually a known lyrical. I can predict events past, present, and future. And my powers tell me that Elden Ring will be released March 2022. <laughs> Can't wait for the Screen Rant article on this tomorrow. <laughs> Mordecai was kind enough to make an outline for us. I thought it was looking a little too, a little too concise. Oh, I probably should have put this in like chronological order because it's kind of a mess, honestly. Yeah, it's such a mess, Mordecai. You didn't even put like what consistencies the trailer made of. Oh God, <laughs> what what is the trailer made of? Hi, Sophie here. When Sin and I started discussing Bloodborne about three years ago, we had an unfortunate tendency to ramble and not answer the important questions. We were too caught up in questions like what characters were trying to achieve, how they were trying to achieve them, and how this all tied into an incredibly confusing plot that we forgot to ask important questions. Like what characters' hobbies were, what they ate, and what they were made of. Luckily, Sin solved this problem with the help of the Angelic Outline, a document Sin wrote that ensures we ask these questions every single time, no matter how inappropriate. And since Elden Ring is never, ever, ever coming out, you can look forward to those same questions repeated yet again. In Sinclair Laws, Phase 4 series, Doors of Bloodborne, back to the podcast. I was first exposed to Elden Ring through the official trailer. But you mentioned that there was a leak beforehand with George R.R. R. Martin. Yeah. Were there any other hints that Elden Ring was coming to us before the official trailer? There was the Great Rune leak, mm. I suppose. Yeah, I remember that one. I think... I, I, I don't remember where it originated. Was it a 4chan post? I think it was a combination of things like 4chan and Reset Era that sort of got smushed together into a kind of amoeba blob thing. But w what happened was there was a reference to something called GR. This is before George R. R. Martin was known to be involved in it. So there was a thing called like, oh yeah, apparently there's this thing called GR that From were working on. And there was that and the knowledge that they were possibly making a Souls-like that was Norse slash Viking influenced. So that led to this theory that GR stood for Great Rune. And it was this like Norse sort of Dark Soulsy thing and then the George R. R. Martin thing dropped and I was like, oh, GR is George R. R. Martin. That's why it's called GR. Someone mentioned that they had started work on it during Ashes of Ariandel, which has those Vikings in it, the Viking enemies. The Millwood Knights. The Millwood Knights, which has the Millwood Knights in it. And that led to this thing that's like, oh, I guess it's like viking E. And what we've seen, like, it doesn't look terribly Norse. But at the same time, like, it's supposed to have, is it like eight different kingdoms in it? So there's possibly like a, a Norse one. It looks more Celtic from what we've seen. But there's possibly like some sort of like Norse kingdom in it. Yeah, I remember people passing the Norse mythology thing around for so much that it just became like this accepted fact. 
even though like I don't think it's like necessarily true just because the the Norse mythology tree is in the game and stuff I don't think it's yeah, like directly yeah. mm-hmm. Norse inspired as it was claimed awesome thank you Mordecai you mentioned here that Phil Spencer played the game he made two trips to Japan recently that we know of one of them was in 2019 another one was in early 2020 before COVID like shut everything down and he said he played Elden Ring in November of 2020 that's when he did the interview and he said oh yeah I played it and I played it for quite a bit and Miyazaki had to run out of the room when I was playing it because he was embarrassed or something And Phil Spencer is, of course, an American business executive who is the current executive vice president of gaming at Microsoft. Yeah, he's a he's a cool guy. I'm guessing it's probably early 2020 that he got to play it when he was visiting uh, Japanese developers. And I, I, I don't think this is this means that Microsoft has the mic- marketing rights, which is like a big misconception. And I know Elden Ring appeared at the Microsoft show, but again, we don't know if they have the marketing rights or not it's not like something official but yeah he got to play it and uh, Tam from GameSpot asked him about that and uh, he's a very cool guy and he gave me a shout out and he even hosted an update so it's like I asked Phil Spencer for you if he's played it which was pretty cool so that is super cool yeah yeah thank you Mordecai so that at least tells us that there's a semblance of a game <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> they take a while to make. Like, this is the thing that we've discovered through the data mining, because, like, I have been involved in the Bloodborne data mining and data collation and everything, and, like, that game started development, like, a very long time before it came out. It was, like, five or six years in development. So, like, Elden Ring has been delayed, so, like, it probably would have been, like, the normal dev cycle if it weren't for COVID, basically. Yeah, it was delayed once before COVID and once because of COVID. And I mean, who knows now? My understanding is like it it was um, it was ready to go basically already. If it hadn't been for COVID, it would be out now. Um, because that's why it's like it was a PS4 game. Like it has a PS4 logo on it because it's supposed to be late gen. It would not look cool for a new game next year and so on to be like a old gen game first yeah yeah at this point i would take a release on any gen i don't care if it's (laughs) the original xbox that's kind of dark souls 2 i guess because that was um both ps3 and ps4 yeah it was like yeah and then we got the the updated version people were guessing that's what's gonna happen with elden ring but by now we're at uh we're at a point where uh, new generation consoles have been out for like half a year now, which doesn't really feel like it, but <laughs> yeah. Another thing on this outline is Chinese concept art leaks. A Chinese uh, content creator, they did a video on like Elden Ring expectations and whatnot. My Chinese is a bit rusty, so I don't didn't fully understand what it said but they had two pieces of concept art that are supposedly for Elden Ring and they uploaded this video and people like posted it on different places and then they took down the video uploaded it with the Chinese concept arts blurred and then they took down the video again and never re-uploaded it I don't think I still have the video saved on my computer though in case and they said some other things along with the the concept arts but i i took it with a grain of salt because from what i've heard from the people who are in the chinese souls community and know this person they can be unreliable right but i do believe the the concept arts are for the game so had they had they like visited from or played it or something apparently they the the person had been to from software uh headquarters before but like right. i i know some like fans who have also been there so it's it's not related 
I don't think it's not an indication. I just think there is one artist on Twitter who said they worked on Elden Ring and they are Chinese. I, I think it could mm. be their art because the art style looks right. very similar. And I think right. they maybe they know the content creator and they... Oh, uh, their their name is uh, Ryuzaki Lollipop, the, the content creator. So I'm just going to call them that because it's a very funny name. But... <laughs> um, I think maybe those two know each other and that's where he got it from and he clearly wasn't supposed to share it and he still did and then he took it down. Um, one of the pieces is of the tusk giant from the E3 trailer it looks like and the other one is this cool looking snake enemy that doesn't really look like it belongs in the game but who knows. And th that I guess like it links into the, the more recent concept art leak that we had. Because that wasn't even a leak, that was just the artist their NDA had expired, so they uploaded it. Oh, um, you're talking about Gabriel's uh, yeah, yeah, uh, E3 trailer concept art. Yeah, yeah, it's he he posted it on his art station, and then he shared it on Reddit along with saying he doesn't know anything about the game. Don't pester him. And then he took down the the post from art station and on Reddit, and people were making jokes that the Bandai Namco rats got to him or whatever, but. <laughs> I, I just think he probably took it down on his own volition. Like, no one told him. He, he was probably getting pestered by people asking him what he knows and when's the game coming out and etc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And there were a bunch of tweets from, from Software PR. In November, I believe, or, or something. Or maybe it was December, because this happened a bunch. One time, um, from Software PR's Twitter account, said that uh, we're, we are developing Elden Ring. Uh, please look forward to it. And this was like <laughs> late last year. Mm. And then on New Year's Day, from Software's PR manager uh, Yasuhiro Kitao, he tweeted like see you in 2021 have a happy new year and people are like oh my god that means elden rings coming out in 2021 when it was just like a formal way of saying happy new year in japanese uh, like oh and then he also tweeted uh, a few weeks later when i think it was the same day the chinese concept arts leaked he he tweeted uh, not related he said uh thank you for awarding us with most anticipated game at the game awards last year it was it was kind of a late uh, acknowledgement of the award but better than nothing i guess <laughs> thank you in the outline you mentioned a Sekiro interview uh that was on day 100 of my updates uh coincidentally <laughs> enough and uh I had news on day 100, day 150, and then day 200, I think. And then people were, like, making conspiracies that <laughs> the stars are aligning. <laughs> Which, um, But anyway, uh, the Sekiro interview was uh, a Japanese interview on... Uh, they were talking about the new Sekiro update, I believe. They briefly mentioned Elden Ring in it, and they talked about, like, some themes of, like, racism and... I, I don't remember exactly what else, but I asked two people who speak Japanese, and one of them said the things they were referring to was Game of Thrones, and another person said they were referring to Elden Ring, so I'm, I'm not sure if they were talking about Game of Thrones. It sounded like Game of Thrones, because the, the, the things they mentioned were directly from Game of Thrones, so it was probably that, right, and they yeah, didn't have any information yeah. on Elden Ring exactly, but it's still interesting to see if like any of those... George R. R. Martin influences uh, make it in the game. We could we could talk about about hair because like one of the things I heard this is like unconfirmed rumor but it it's been around long enough that it's like okay maybe this is legit was that like it, the story of Elden Ring would focus on the descendants of the gods. I think that's sort of what they meant by racism that there'd be like all these different descendants of these different gods. And one of the examples, these, yeah, the descendants of um, one of the gods, they had the very long flowing red hair, like the tusk giant and the, the mechanical arm lady from the trailer. 
And I said, oh, that's interesting, because I've never seen Game of Thrones, but I did read the Game of Thrones wiki. <laughs> um, it was marginally shorter than watching it. And I know that they make a big deal in, in that, apparently, about, like, yeah, the characters who have, like, the silver hair. The Targaryens. That, like, marks out their, like, royal lineage. And I'm like, oh, that's sort of the same, then. The idea that, like, people have distinct physical traits that mark out sort of where they're from. I think that's actually a really good point, and people speculated that in like the the non-leaked concept art we have of the 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 character that has like it it looks like they're wearing a skin yeah yeah and with the the golden eyes so maybe maybe if the the character is closer to godhood the more golden their eyes will be this is a weird thing they kind of did in dark souls 3 and then they just never actually directly address it which is that when you're creating a character you can be irithelian and it says, Irithyll people, they're descendants of the gods. You can tell they're descendants of the gods because their skin is blue. And because they're descended f- from the gods, everyone with blue skin is rounded up and taken to Irithyll. And that sounds significant, and then you, n- that doesn't happen. There's no blue characters in Dark Souls 3 that don't exist. And it's like, ah. It's probably because James Cameron came knocking at the door and was like... <laughs> Wait a minute, Mordecai. What does Terminator have to do with anything? Well, Terminator took, like, 10, 15 years to get a proper <laughs> sequel, so maybe that's the reference. Terminator 2 is seven years after the first Terminator. That's in- that's, that's in- inconceivable today. Wow. That a sequel would be seven, it'd be like two years. Anyway. How long is it going to take him for the Avatar sequel? So far, over a decade. Hey, that's uh, coincidentally how long ago George R. Martin released the last a Song of Ice and Fire book, so... Ah. <laughs> I have never read them, but every single time I'm out at like a thrift store or an antique place, there's always piles of them. Because people buy them and I think they just can't finish them. <laughs> As someone who has uh, finished them, it, w- it was a good experience, probably the, the best fiction series I've ever read, but I kind of wish I hadn't, because... Yeah. It's just never going to conclude. Yeah. I, I remember when um, when the, Miyazaki was talking about working with George R. R. Martin, he said that, like, well, I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones, but Martin's also just, just a horror writer, and I'm a big fan of his horror, his horror novels. And he mentioned a horror novel called Fever Dream. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to have time to read A Song of Ice and Fire by the time Elden Ring comes out. I would have if I'd known. <laughs> um... But no, and then I said, oh, I'll look at Fever Dream. I wonder if there'll be anything in that. And it's set in a fucking paddle steamer. So, <laughs> probably not. Did you read it? Yeah. Very bloodborne, actually. I can see where they got that from the notion of like people making synthetic blood for vampires. I don't think I ever finished Fever Dream. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. a huge fan of it. But... <laughs> I just had to have something to talk about. <laughs> anyway, um. People always say, like, Elden Ring is delayed because George R. R. Martin is involved, and yeah. that's another big misconception, because his part yeah, for the game was done. It, it was done years ago. If you ask him now, he probably doesn't even remember ever. <laughs> so this is the best people were like, Do you, is George R. R. Martin, like, is he a big Souls fan? And I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think he knows what a video game is he was just like i was consulting on a video game in japan and then that's his entire his entire commentary and i'm like all right doesn't he write on a mechanical typewriter he he writes on microsoft dos <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he's old school and uh someone on reddit uh, on this Elden Ring subreddit posted a picture of themselves meeting Martin at a convention like yeah, yeah. sometime in 2019 and then uh, they said I asked him about it and Martin said that Miyazaki visited his home in uh, I can't remember where it was somewhere in like southern US I believe if I'm not mistaken um, he visited my home with like 10 translator or something oh. and I just like start picturing that in my head Miyazaki coming with like 10 bodyguards <laughs> next to him <laughs> to, to Martin's home <laughs> and George R. R. Martin is like but Miyazaki-san I thought Bloodborne was written in English oh don't even fucking start <laughs> what is that about
Hi, Sophie here. Mordecai, sweet, gentle Mordecai, you were not there to see what I saw in the year of our Lord, 2015. Their voices were even and low. Their eyes were level and straight. Um, actually, the game was written in English first. Uh, okay, okay, but like, when you beat the game, and it shows the credits, and the credits list everyone who worked on the game, uh, it says that the script was translated and edited by a team of three people, who are, who are Ryan Morris, Ian Milton Polly and Ama Kodaka, and they work for Frog Nation. So it was it was translated by them from a, from a Japanese script. Um, actually, Miyazaki speaks English. I English is a required subject in. Um, actually. However, since then, Sin has discovered the real truth. The game was written in Russian first. Back to the podcast. So let's move on to the juiciest part of the podcast. Recently, a trailer was leaked. Four very blurry MP4 files were leaked. <laughs> packed together. And then up and then upscaled by the Lore Hunter, our friend. Thank you, Lore Hunter. Yeah, so this was I think the first of March is when they started becoming public, I guess. Yeah. It was floating around beforehand, like, weeks leading up to it. And then uh, I had some parts of it before it became public. Can you tell me your impressions, feelings, and emotions when you saw that trailer? I was pretty excited because it actually showed some gameplay and it showed that the game is finally real and yeah it was just also a moment of panic that oh no this is uh about to take the internet by storm and people are gonna be like uh, it just looks like dark souls 2 or 3 with a horse in it and uh wh what else did we expect when in yeah reality it's just uh old internal footage meant for shareholders of Bandai Namco, the publisher, which is yeah, the source yeah. of the leak. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reminds me of um, when there was, a Dark, there was a Dark Souls 3 leak that was literally like just before they, they announced it. But the leak, like, it's the same deal where it's a leak and it looks like it was internal. But it's none of the stuff in the leak ended up in the game. Like, it's not fake. You can see it's real. But they mentioned oh, there's all these mechanics and areas and characters that you see in, in that leak that did not make it in. Are you talking about super the, old. the no screenshots? Yeah, the ones that were on um, in the no. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's all stuff that's, like, pretty much didn't make it in. And it's been discovered through, through data mining that, yeah, this is an old, very, very old build that they basically scrapped and had to rebuild from the ground up. So when I look at the Elden Ring stuff, I'm like, okay, there's a lot of Dark Souls placeholder stuff here. Like that's that sure is homing soul mass. But <laughs> I'm like, okay, I don't I don't know if any of this is going to make it in there. Like, if it's going to look like this, if these animations are going to be in there, they have the classic door opening animation. The <laughs> like that's in there, but like that that is in the Sekiro trailer, and it's not in the Sekiro game. So. I mean, it's hard to say how much of it will make it because, like you said, there was a lot of unfinished and placeholder assets and it certainly doesn't help that the quality of the footage is just so low that you can't make much out. There was a point where I thought there was a castle in the sky and then I realized it was the watermark. <laughs> <laughs> because the upscaling had made it look a little, like, squishy. And I'm like, oh, that's just the word confidential. <laughs> Yeah, when, when I saw it, I was, uh, the people I was talking to, we were trying to make out what it said, because I, I was I was more curious about that than, like, the actual content itself. Yeah. And when, uh, if you watch the four clips chronologically, I believe the first one, or well, in all of them, you can hear some background noise. The, the first one has, like, a baby crying in the background, and you can hear, like, the TVs on the background, like, 
I know they, they they put so much effort to make it look low quality they couldn't even like blur out the background noise but anyway you can hear the audio in the background it's like the TV and you hear uh, a phrase uttered from the TV and we we know the the trailer is from uh, Bandai Namco Greek shareholders and I asked one of my friends who speaks Greek if they like recognize any of the audio in the background and then uh, he was like yeah the, the, this is the tv anchor that's on uh, the news every night in the background <laughs> <laughs> and i like set out to find like the day that tv anchor <laughs> said those words and oh i asked God. them what those words were and it's like uh th- the words she said were i think stomelon which apparently means in the near future <laughs> And I, I was like, I'm never going to find this. It's just such a common phrase to say. Because I was trying to pinpoint when this could have been recorded and how old exactly it is. But yeah. anyway, that, that, that stuff was more interesting to me than like the content of a game that's probably like not representation of what it currently is anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you also tried to find out who was one of the voice actors? Yeah, I was trying to find out who the narrator the trailer is and uh, i even like uh, uh, so if you if you remember like earlier i mentioned the chinese uh ryuzaki yeah. lollipop guy he yeah. he went on a he seized the opportunity to talk about the leak trailer as if like he knows everything and like the very first thing uh, information he said that he knew about is that the narrator of the trail of uh, the leak trailer is will vanders or patch's voice actor and you, you cannot convince me that that is Patch's no. voice actor. If I had to guess, like, who does this sound like from the Souls games? It sounds a little like Aldia without processing. When he gives you that speech about, like, you know, like many monarchs have come and gone. It's sort of, it's delivered a little like that. If it's Pate's voice actor, maybe? Peter Serafin of Yeah, Bricks. yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. It uh, might, I don't know. Another popular pick was Peter Dinklage, which is... Um, Tyrion Lannister from Game of Thrones and I don't think it's him because one it sounds like an actual British accent not a fake one because yeah, um, yeah. Peter Dinklage is American and two yeah. Bandai Namco I don't, I don't think they would have like put in the the funds to hire him for an internal trailer uh, even a final trailer I don't think they would have hired him though, though that would be super cool if if any of the Game of Thrones cast like does any promo for Elden Ring I'm, I'm gonna faint <laughs> <laughs> you know who else it could be Lucy Briggs Owen Sophie do the outro that was Snack Coven in episode 244 with very special guest Mordecai, host of the Elden Ring update. Mordecai, if people want to find out about Elden Ring, if there's any news today, where should they go? I'm Elden Ring News on YouTube or at Elden Ring Update on Twitter, and I post a daily video every day, so catch me if you can. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming, Mordecai. This was super fun. It really was. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you for sharing all your knowledge with us. I wish I had a... We had more to talk about, but... (laughs) Maybe. Maybe tomorrow. You never know. (laughs) No. (laughs) Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Sin. And thank you, everyone, for listening. And see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. Hi. A little more enthusiasm, Mordecai. You just had a very pleasant experience. <laughs> so <pretty sassy> here. <laughs> the way things work, all right. The way things work with Sin is, the first time she meets you, she is very deferential, and then as she gradually gets to know you, she starts to give you shit until like she will just be DMing you out of nowhere to call you a bitch. <laughs> This is her relationship with seemingly everyone. I am frightened if she ever gets contacts within the industry that we're going to have to put up with this all the time. (laughs) I recently learned that Chapo Trap House may have listened to us at some point, so I'm very worried. Is that? It doesn't. Don't worry.
You want to know, we have actually never done an episode on Fallout. It's because Sophie doesn't like the good Fallout. It's because it's because Sin makes every episode about Fallout, so we don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, isn't that every episode? <laughs> yeah, but uh, and to direct regardless of what the guest wants to talk about, she will she will assault you with Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Mordecai. <laughs>